Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to this uh, screencast in which we are going to understand two things. Number one, size and number two, type of orders in the stock market. So let us get going by first of all talking about the order size. And when I look at this order here, which is an order for 100 shares, it readily tells me that this is an order for one market lot or one round lot. If you are interested in a definition for market lot, you can simply say that a market lot or a round lot is simply the standard size of the order. And therefore, that implies that any order which is uh, not conforming to the standard size, like we have here, an order for 58 shares, this one is going to be called an order for an, uh, order for an odd lot of 58 shares. So that then means that if you come across an order of this type, which is an order for 1,025 shares, it's going to be an order for 10 market lots and an odd lot of 25 shares. Now let us move over to the type of orders. And if you look at the first one here, which is an order to buy or sell at the best available price, the name for such an order is the market order where you are telling your broker to buy a share of stock for you or if you have a share to sell, you are telling your broker to sell it for the best price available in the market and if you are doing that, you have placed a market order. The second type of order that I am seeing here is an order to buy at or below a specified price. So if you are telling your broker um, to buy at or below a specified price, you are basically placing a limit order and this specified price is known as the limit price. Uh, similarly, if you are on the selling side and you place an order with your broker to sell a share of stock for you at or above a specified price, then also you have placed a limit order and you have uh, specified a limit price for your order. In this case, this order is going to be called a limit buy order and in this case, the order is going to be called a limit sell order. Now, um, item number four here uh, asks me a question that the price specified in order numbers two and three above is called. So if you need to fill in this blank, your answer is going to be pretty obvious. We are talking about this specified price here and since this price is related to a limit order, we give it a name and that is limit price. Now let us also quickly look at the type of limit orders that you can place with your broker. Number one, limit orders that are meant to be filled immediately and if they can't be filled immediately, they are meant to be cancelled. Such orders have, a, have an interesting name, my friends. Such orders are called fill or kill orders. The second one here is a limit order that uh, is supposed to expire if it is not filled within the day and as the sentence itself suggests this is going to be called a day order. The third one here which I am seeing is the limit order that is going to remain in effect for six months after being placed and after that if it is not filled, cancelled or renewed uh, then it is going to be automatically cancelled. Such orders my friends are known as good till cancelled orders. Now let me uh, look at this sentence here, sentence number 5 which says that during falling markets if you place an order to sell. Now the first thing as a rational investor which is going to come uh, to your mind is why in the first place you might want to sell your share in a falling market. You would rather want to um, wait on till the trend in the market is reversed and the price uh, starts rising again so that then you can sell your share. Um, at a higher price than what you bought it for. So that is what is your rational motivation. But then your expectation might be belied. The market instead of um, reversing its trend, if it continues to fall, then you are going to find yourself in a serious loss making situation. And then uh, you might want to tell your broker, well, the, the, the prices are falling, uh, they are continuously falling and I would not uh, want to wait uh, indefinitely. So once the stock price reaches now a specified level, I am not ready to wait any longer. So if the price falls too much and continues to fall, this is the level of price till which you should wait. And after that also, if the price does not rise, then please sell my share at this price itself. And if you are telling your broker such a thing, you are basically placing an order which is known as a stop order, also known as a stop loss order and also uh, we can use another name for it. It's known as a conditional market order. Uh, 
in a similar vein, if you are on the buying side and you would want to obviously buy a share for as low a price as possible, but you encounter rising market conditions. In that case, if you place an order to buy once the stock price reaches a specified level, you are again, my friends, uh, placing a stop order or a stop loss order or a conditional market order. You want to buy the share at the cheapest price possible, but the share price is continuing to rise and you do not want to wait indefinitely because if you do that and the price trend does not reverse, then probably the share price is going to rise so much that it may go beyond your reach and before that happens, you would like to uh, buy it. So in that case, you can uh, place a stop order or a stop loss order to buy. Um, in each of these two orders, order number five and six, you realize that you are specifying a price. You are instructing your broker to sell the share in this uh, case once the stock price reaches a specified level. And in this order also, which is an order to buy, you are instructing your broker to buy the share for you once the price rises up to a specified level. And this price, this specified level, my friends, is known as the stop price. So that is what uh, is going to be the answer to this question here, which says that the price specified in order numbers five and six above is called and you're required to fill in the blank. You can fill in the blank by simply writing two words and those two words, my friends, are stop price. Another thing that might come uh, to your mind is why these orders, that is order number five and six, are known as conditional market orders and the answer is, is pretty simple. Uh, you would realize that um, once the stop price is reached, the order is going to get activated only at that time. So because once the stop price is reached, the order gets activated and becomes a market order. That is why we call it a conditional market order. And you would also perhaps appreciate the fact that since the activation of the market order is conditional on the stock price hitting the stop price, it is uh, naturally going to be called a conditional market order. Now let us uh, proceed ahead to item number eight here, which says, uh, which talks about an order to buy at below a specified price or sell a share at above a specified price once the stock price reaches a specified level. So if you look at this sentence carefully, you are going to realize that we are actually specifying two prices here. First of all, we are waiting for the stock price to reach a specified level and that price is known as the stop price and once the stock price hits the stop price, then we are telling our broker, uh, depending on what we want to do, either we want to buy or sell, we are telling our broker to buy at or below a particular level or sell um, at or above a particular level. And when we do that, we are actually specifying a limit price. So since this type of an order is going to specify two prices, number one is stop price and number two a uh, limit price, that is what is going to give a name to this order. We are going to call this order a stop limit order. Naturally, um, the two prices involved in order number eight uh, here are going to be the stop price and a limit price. So with this understanding, my friends, we are uh, ready for a little quiz about the uh, type and size of orders, but uh, we are going to look at that quiz in the next video. For now, it's bye-bye. Thank you very much.